Hello, grade nine science class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson four. We're gonna talk about states of matter today. Uh, as you can see from the key points, you've heard of these states of matter before, solid, liquid, and gas. You know a lot about them. Uh, and you also know a lot about key point four, which is phase changes. That's the transition between liquid and solid and gas and the three of them. Uh, you know all about liquid to solid, which is freezing, and solid to liquid, which is melting. Uh, you know when you spill water, it evac evaporates. That's liquid to gas. And when you have a glass of cold water, um, you get condensation on the outside. That's gas to liquid. You're familiar with this stuff. We're just going to put a little bit more of a scientific spin on all of this. Let's go. I'll shift back over. So the three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. Remember to pause at the beginning of slides and write the stuff down. Uh, this is a really quick one. Let's flow right on into the third slide. So um, how we define these states of matter is based upon how the particles are arranged. So when we talk about matter, that's anything that has mass and takes up space, has weight and takes up space. Um, so it is based on how those particles are arranged in that space. Uh, it is based on how much energy the particles have. It is also based upon the distance between those particles. We can imagine that solids are much more packed together and gases are much more spread apart. Uh, so this is what it matter. It depends on, um, as well as a few other things, to be honest. So when we think about um, particles and that make up solid, liquid, and gas, we are going to think about the kinetic theory of matter. So matter is made up of particles which are always moving, are in continual random motion. So you can see by the diagram here, we've got all these particles moving around. Uh, even particles that are stacked together and solid are actually vibrating um, constantly depending on how much energy they have. Uh, when they have too much energy, then they can break apart. So matter is made up of particles which are, con which are in continual random motion. That is the kinetic theory of matter. So uh, you can see from our diagram here that the solid particles are still moving around. They're packed tight, which means that they're solid particles, but they still vibrate from side to side and up and down. So solids are particles uh, of solids tacked tightly, tightly packed, vibrating about a fixed position. These solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. The desk has a definite shape and it def takes up a definite amount of space. Uh, compare that to a liquid, where if you pour it out of a cup, it will spread all out. It does not have a definite shape. So particles um, that make up solids are unique that way, where they keep a definite shape, but just remember that they are always still vibrating. When we talk about liquids, they're still fairly packed together, but you can see they're moving a whole bunch more and they're not as orderly as they were in the solid picture. So the particles of liquids are tightly packed, but are far enough apart to slide over one another. They're bumping, they're moving, not all of them stay on the screen the whole time. So this is what causes liquids to have an indefinite shape and a definite volume. So they take up a certain amount of space, but their shape is all over the place. They take the shape of whatever uh, container they are occupying. But if the containers are the same volume, they will fill it up to the same amount. So um, if we would say solids have a definite shape and a definite volume, liquids have an indefinite shape and a definite volume. So the volume always stays the same. We're gonna move on to gas, which is key point three, we're moving along. So the particles of gases are very far apart and they move freely. So you can see that the gas particles are moving around here, they just bump into each other every once in a while. There's almost none here a lot of the time. Um, that is what a gas um, would look like. There's a lot of space between them. So we say gases have an indefinite shape and indefinite volume. So if you were to release a gas, it would go everywhere and the volume is able to expand it. If, like if you were to release a gas in a room, it would just expand and expand and expand. We've all farted before. So 
Um, let's go for the, I hope that makes sense. If anyone has any questions about a solid, liquid, or gas, um, we can definitely talk about that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. So, um, now the phase changes, that's key point four. So, um, when we go from a solid to a liquid, that's the description of the phase change, solid to liquid, the term we use is melting. I'm sure you're familiar with that. And the heat goes into the solid as it melts. That is the way that the heat moves. So when you're melting something, the heat is moving into a solid. And that makes sense. Like if you were to put your ice cube on a hot element, you would expect the ice cube to soak up that heat and then melt. So that's kind of intuitive. That makes sense. Um, when you're going from a liquid to a solid, that's called freezing. And the heat leaves the liquid as it freezes, which also makes intuitive sense if you were to put a liquid um, like water in an ice tray and put it in the freezer. As the freezer draws the heat away from the liquid, it will freeze. And it does that because the freezer is cold. Um, so when you're making something more solid, the heat is leaving. When you're making something liquid, the heat is being absorbed into it. When we talk about a liquid to a gas, uh, that's vaporization or evaporation. Uh, that includes boiling water and the heat goes into the liquid. So as you're expanding um, to less organized states, so as you go from solid to liquid and liquid to gas, you're adding energy to it. Uh, as you're going to a more organized state, which would be from gas to liquid to solid, um, you're removing heat. So from gas to liquid is called condensation, as I mentioned, and heat leaves the gas as it condenses. So anytime you're getting more uh, formed, um, more organized, you are, you are having heat leave. Uh, there's the last one that maybe you're not familiar with. It's when you go from a solid straight to a gas, and that's called sublimation. So heat goes into the solid as it sublimates. It's just a very fast version uh, going straight from solid to gas instead of having to go through the liquid phase first. So I hope that made sense. Again, if you have any questions, let me know and we can go through it together. But what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to head to this website. It is a simulation uh, that is very, very interesting in how it uh, treats solids, liquids, and gas. You can control how much heat you put into it. You can control the temperature. Uh, and then you can see how they break apart and how the um, particles move. So step one is to follow the link to the simulation. Um, you're going to play with the simulation to figure out how to use it. There are instructions and a diagram given in your booklet. So there are some questions as well as you get started. What do you think is going to happen? Make sure you do all those before you get into the complete set of instructions uh, and then answer the questions. You're going to have to um, explore as you answer the questions. There's no specific uh, set of instructions to answer the questions in order. You're going to have to think about what the question wants to know and then go ahead and use your smarts to figure out how to um, get the answer. Again, if you have questions, uh, I'll be there to help. Thanks very much for watching everyone uh, and I will see you soon.